Hi, this is Stephanie Miller from The Stephanie Miller Show. Please enjoy this exclusive clip from my show on Political Voices Network. It does not take a legal expert to look at yesterday in New York at this fraud trial and go, what was that? What a hot mess. I mean, it, once again, I, every legal expert I've seen, Renato says, I've never seen anything like this in my life. This is totally up to the judge what happens here. They've already lost the fraud case, correct? Now it's just about the amount of damages, and they're going out of their way to piss the judge off. Can you explain to us what we're seeing? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, what we saw yesterday was not a legal strategy at all. There's no Trying to understand this as a legal strategy um, is pointless. You're, that's not going to actually work. What, what, ha what was happening yesterday was a, a, a distraction sideshow that was orchestrated by Trump to get people like you and me talking about his antics yeah. as opposed to talking about his fraud. He want, And it's it's really not aimed, of course, at us. It's aimed at his followers. Mm -hmm. It's aimed at his supporters. He's aimed at the, at the mainstream press. It's aimed so that everyone is talking about him. Everyone's talking about how aggrieved he is. Everyone's talking about how much he hates the judge and thinks the judge is unfair. When instead you have overwhelming evidence that he engaged in fraud, yeah. essentially he laid down, his legal team laid down in this entire litigation, he took the fifth for over 400 times, and that's what we should be discussing, is that this guy's a big time fraudster, yeah. as opposed to discussing the sideshow. Renato, it's a, that was one of my main questions for you about the fifth, because you tweeted Donald Trump's testimony today is not moving forward a purely legal strategy. His legal team's uh, his legal team strategy has always was always defensive and focused on limiting liability elsewhere, which is why he took the fifth hundreds of times in his deposition. You don't frequently take the fifth in a civil case if you plan to win. Trump's team likely saw the need to essentially concede defeat here and mitigate collateral damage coming from a loss, but Trump's ego has forced a change in strategy. So. What explain that to us that he took the fifth in the deposition, but he clearly didn't seem like he was helping himself by not by talking yesterday, right? Right. So, all right. In a in a criminal case, when you take the fifth, it can't be used against you. Right. Um, in a civil case, it can. So, if 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 for example, you, you sue me and you add, and then in the deposition you ask me, Renato, did you commit fraud? And I say, well, I take the fifth. Well, actually, the judge or jury, depending on who's deciding the case, is allowed to infer that my answer would have been negative for me, would have hurt me. You could take right. what they call it an adverse inference, because in a civil case, it, it can be used against you. So taking the fifth 400 something times uh, is a problem for him in the civil case. So why did he do it? Well, if you remember at the time, that there was some concern that the Manhattan D.A., was deciding whether or not he was going to indict this case. And there was a book written about it and a lot of complaining and, and uh, tomatoes that were thrown back and forth uh, uh, between former Manhattan DA uh, you know, special prosecutors and so on about whether or not this case should have been indicted criminally. Right. So his lawyers, I think, had a serious concern that this guy was t waiving his Fifth Amendment right and taking and, and, and taking and questions and actually fielding answers in a deposition that he might hurt himself. Right. Now that's sort of, you know, beside the point. And Trump's like, I don't want to lose. I, I, I'm not going to take this sitting down and I'm going to I'm going to fight. And so he <laughs> gets was, up there. Right, and, this was like the coup you know, after he lost the election. This was his own personal, like, legal <laughs> launching a coup. He's screaming at the judge. He's screaming at the AG. You pointed out, Renato, you said you don't attack the judge constantly if you want to win the trial. The primary focus today is about PR spin politics. Trump wants to convince his followers the trial's rigged, that he's a victim, not a fraudster. Secondarily, this is the important part, Renato. You said he's trying to provo provoke the judge. Right, and you said it could pr bear some legal fruit, but it's doubtful it'll bear much, given how outrageous the behavior of Trump and his lawyers have been. This is just more spin. Trump wants the judge to do something unwise in order to use it as proof of his attacks. So at one point, Renato, you know, when he was going on and on, the judge is saying this isn't a political rally, answer the questions, and then he did say, I will shut you down and, and just it, it, take every bad inference I can. I mean, so he... Could he have done that? What, what are they trying to get the judge to do is my question. Something like that. I mean, they were trying to get him to do one of two things. Either shut Trump down 
So then he could say, I was silenced. They wouldn't even let me speak at my own trial. (laughs) Okay. Or, um, you know, have some offhand, off-color remark that, you know, they could use or twist to say that there's bias. The judge was wise to just let him keep talking. If I was the judge's law clerk, I'd say just sit there and listen. It's almost like the, the analogy I would use is if your kid is spouting off and mouthing off to you because you know she's mad that you're not letting her whatever right? right take the car or she has to clean her room so she's spouting off at the end of the day getting into an argument with a child is almost like um bringing yourself down to their level let them burn it off all their anger and at the end of the day you're in charge right <laughs> so you know, have a worse penalty at the end. Okay, now you're gonna now you're grounded for two weeks or whatever. <laughs> right. And that's I think what the judge would be would be wise to do here. Yeah, that's exactly right. It's like the you know one week you know. Blah, blah, blah. Okay, now it's two. Keep going. Um, <laughs> you and you said his lawyers are going along with this to ingratiate themselves with Trump. It's unethical and imprudent, but they're, they've clearly picked the path already. None of this will impact the result of the trial, which will be disastrous for Trump. The the evidence can't be ignored. I mean, the documents can't be ignored. Um, and yet, there's Alina Haba saying, "You can't tell me to sit down." I'm like, "Have you never watched a court show ever, or been in a courtroom?" <laughs> Right. Sure. Yeah, well, the, the the funny thing is, she was saying, I think on television, like this is a First Amendment issue, and it's like, well, if you've ever been to a court, uh, the judge is often going to tell witnesses what they can or can't say, right. like you know, objection sustained or whatever, right? Uh, shut down testimony. That happens in every trial. It's just it, it. Look, she's not a very experienced lawyer, not a very experienced trial attorney, uh, but I think what what I was trying to get at when I was writing what I did, yeah is that it's a mistake to try to think of this as a legal from a legal perspective because a lot of people are sitting there talking about the legal strategy i, I would be put on television i was on television several times yesterday yeah. and i was asked things like what do you what's the strategy of his legal team the, what they're doing yesterday what they were doing was not practicing law there's no that what they were doing bears absolutely no resemblance to what i do when i go to trial for my clients yeah. okay they're not trying to shape their testimony. They're not trying to move forward an argument to win. They're sitting there and praising some guy who's attacking the judge, which they shouldn't be doing under Rule Eight Point uh, Two, prof- Rule of Professional Responsibility. They should not be, um, you know, th- th- they should not be enabling him to disobey the judge's rulings, and they should not be telling him to yeah. disregard the judge's rulings. But they're just sitting there and doing that and essentially clapping and cheering for a guy who's basically trying to create fodder for his fundraising emails. What, That's what it, was going on yeah, yesterday. I mean, and can you explain the attacking his clerk? I, I've never heard of this, you know, from Trump to the lawyers so that he's had to leave this gag order in place. I've just never... Is that a, a tactic that you've ever seen used before? Well, no. I mean, it's it's not a it's not a, a tactic that anyone who actually wants to win a lawsuit would use. Uh, yeah. And it requires a lot of power. In other words, you know, a common criminal is not going to attack the judge's law clerk. It's just going to get him in a lot of trouble. But what what he's doing? He's picking on a woman, yeah. okay, versus picking on a, a white guy. All right, an older white guy. So that's the first thing he's picking on a younger woman. Yeah. Second of all, she had a photo online with her with a Democratic politician and. One thing we've learned from social media is how images and videos and so forth can be used to distort. Yeah. And that's really what it was. I view it as disinformation. And the reason I said, well, this could be politics or spin or PR is like, look, I'm not a disinformation expert, but I am a legal expert. And I can tell you, this is not law. This has nothing to do with law or legal <laughs> strategy. It's something in that other vein. Last one, one real quick, and I, I kind of would love to keep you longer. But um, headline is, Ivanka is Trump's last hope in the fraud trial, and she will let him down, <laughs> according to <laughs> legal experts. I think it was Norm Eisen said it's likely uh, Ivanka Trump, st- uh, that he sees her testimony as his last hope to stop the bleeding after Don and Eric had a rough time of it. Uh, Ivanka Trump will not be the former president's saving grace because she has already uh, demonstrated that when push comes to shove she always ends up looking out for herself what do you anticipate from her testimony she's trying to do too she's gonna be trying to do too much in her testimony first of all she's not going to do some sort of scorched earth silly strategy she's going to actually try to answer the questions um and she cares about her image donald trump doesn't care what you or i think of him 
Um, you know, maybe he does, but he, he's not going to let that on. Ivanka Trump is trying to not look too bad and please her dad and not get herself in trouble all at the same time, and that's an impossible task. <laughs> right. Renato, <laughs> thanks for taking time for us on such a big week. We appreciate it. Yeah. We'll see you next Thank time. You. There he goes, Renato Mariani. <laughs>